Welcome back, you two. Greetings, Lord Here. Glad you could join us. Glad to be here. I would have come sooner, were our own defense is not in question, but I am pleased to report that our soldiers are assembling for deployment to Alamigo as we speak. We're grateful for your support. Thanks to the efforts of our allies, it won't be long before we've established defensive positions on this front as well. <clears throat> we have some good news too. Elfano has come back to us. As for the bad news... So, Alphano won't wake up, Gaius van Baelsar is alive and hunting Assians, and the Empire is planning to poison us all with toxic gas. Does that sound about right? Ordinarily, any one of those things would have left me in shock. But the way things have been lately, it's all starting to seem pretty normal. Getting back to your report, are we sure this Black Rose is the weapon Maxima was talking about? It fits the description. And it seems we have Alfino to thank for sparing us an early demonstration of its effectiveness. I have a feeling this won't be the last time his bravery in the Empire will serve us here in Eorzea. The threat of an unknown weapon has had us all on edge. But now that we know what we're dealing with, we can take steps to defend against it. As for Gaius... I'm not sure what to think. Am I happy he's alive? Not in the slightest. Am I happy he's hunting Assians? Aye, I'd have to say I am. Oh, speaking of Garlians you didn't expect to see, we have a tale of our own, as it happens. When we sent envoys to the Imperial Army to request talks, they returned with the message that Barisos Galvus would be attending. The Emperor himself. Well, Varus did sanction the Popularis peace mission. But knowing that an Assian walks in his son's skin, I do not see how we can trust him or anyone from that nest of vipers. The Alliance would proceed with negotiations regardless, if only to give ourselves more time to prepare. We do, however, require your cooperation. Ah, right. Yes. So, as a condition for the talks to go forward, the Empire has requested that a member of the Scions be present. There'll be a representative from each Alliance nation, of course, but I'm afraid we have to ask that you come along too. God, Lise! You know how much I hate politics! But then, what choice do I have? Alphano and the others aren't going to do it. Very well. I shall attend as the Scion's representative. In case you're wondering why I didn't ask you, the Empire also requested the presence of Eorzea's champion. That's settled then. We don't know what Varus means to bring to the table, or why he wants you there, but having you close at hand will make all the difference. The meeting will take place on the border. Anticipating an early assault, we mean to position the bulk of our forces nearby. The Alliance leaders should already be on their way. Once you're ready, we can head out and join them.
esteemed representatives of the Eorzean Alliance. On behalf of the Galian Empire, I thank you for inviting me here today. As this parley was convened at your request, I invite you to speak first. Very well, your radiance. I, Nanimo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of Ul, should be pleased to oblige you. As recent events in Alamigo and Doma have made plain, the subjugation and exploitation of neighboring nations is not a sustainable policy. Should this day end in war, you may very well defeat us, but you will never extinguish the people's desire for freedom. Though it may not be in our lifetime, there will be another revolution, another war, and the cycle will continue. Doma has entered into a concord with the nations of Eorzea, a partnership wherein we recognize one another as equals. Garlemald could be afforded similar treatment. You need only set aside your ambitions and join us in paving a path towards peace. <laughs> you will not win me over with sophistry, Your Grace. As you know only too well, this alliance lacks the strength to keep the peace within its own borders. Even now, your struggles with the Beastmen continue unabated. Divided, you sow this fertile soil with the seeds of your differences and reap naught but discord and chaos for your trouble. Eorzea must be united under one leader. One purpose. I would offer you both and bring an end to your strife. With all due respect, Your Radiance, the only thing that you offered the people of Alamigo was fear and hopelessness. The citizens of Dorma can also attest to the meager arms of Imperial rule. There is no purpose to be found in a life of oppression each day more uncertain than the last. Our people are willing to die for their freedom. A great many already have, and countless more will, if we don't put an end to this madness here and now. We brought order and stability to your lives. This madness and bloodshed is of your own making. You broke the peace, not Garlemald. Peace? Order? You kill our peoples, despoil our lands, take everything that is ours. And what? You expect us to lick the boot that grinds our faces into the dirt? I expect you to weigh the costs. To recognize that countless lives have been lost on both sides in pursuit of a greater good, and to not squander all we have achieved in a fit of petulance. Your Radiance. I fear I can personally attest to the dangers of pursuing one's vision with such righteous fervor. For a thousand years, the Holy See of Ishgard waged war with dragons. A thousand years of sacrifice, of sorrow and hate, in which we bathed in the blood of friend and foe alike. Had it gone on any longer, we may well have drowned. Yet we have chosen to raise ourselves out of this bloody spiral, and have since made peace with our former enemy. So I understand. No doubt the dragons were more receptive to your overtures in the wake of their leader's demise.
You speak of peace, yet use war to achieve it. Your father would not have bothered to obscure his intent with honeyed words. He understood that strength is all that matters in the end. Without his clarity of vision, I can but wonder what will become of Ishgard and her people. There was a time when Galamal too lacked a leader of conviction. Weak and unable to wield magic, we were at the mercy of the strong from whom we sought refuge in the bitter cold of the north. Were it not for the discovery of Ceruleum and the subsequent development of Magitek, we might never have gained the power to take back that which was rightfully ours. You speak as if your people were the first to have been driven from their homes. Limsa Laminsa was built by wayward souls in search of a place to call their own. On the shores of Vilbrand we found it, and from those humble beginnings did we grow and flourish, and all without robbing our neighbors of their liberty. So saith the pirate. Am I to believe that you simply asked the kobolds to yield up their lands and that they were happy to oblige you? That you did not drive them out like rats in the hold of one of the many ships seized by your privateers. I will concede that after centuries of exile, reclamation may be mistaken for invasion. Nevertheless, it is not. And those who till stolen soil have no right to object when cast out in turn. Your uncompromising nature rivals that of the Ixil. They too lament circumstances which they themselves perpetuate. Were they but to embrace peace, we would welcome them with open arms. Indeed, some few have done just that, and now receive of the Twelve's Woods bounty. Would that your people might learn from their example. <laughs> you dare compare us to the Birdmen? You who thought to invoke the Twelve and threaten all of creation? I came here in the hope of finding some speck of common ground, but I see now these discussions will accomplish nothing. Despite what you people may believe, I am not wont to choose the sword over the olive branch. Tis but a pity men are loath to accept one without first being shown the other. Wait! I beg you. This meeting was supposed to be a chance to find a way forward together, not to bemoan the missteps which brought us here. Please. If you truly consider violence a last resort, there must be a way we can come to an agreement. As Mistress Alizé says, we did not come here to bicker over the past, but to discuss how we might strive towards a brighter future. Emperor Varys, may I suggest a short recess, that all present might compose themselves prior to beginning anew? Very well. I pray this intermission will suffice to move these talks in a more constructive direction.
Now then, who would have the floor? Before we resume, I wish to offer you an apology. After you graciously accepted our invitation to discuss an armistice, we have done naught but rebuke you at every opportunity. I believe I speak for all of us when I say we are deeply sorry for our discourtesy. I'll admit your familiarity with our affair surprised me, and served to remind me how little I know of yours. I think all here can understand the desire to reclaim one's homeland, but why expand further? That is my question. If I may, the answer can be found in the Imperial Doctrine they took great pains to impart to my people. Recognizing the threat icons posed to the world, Solus Zos Galvus decreed that they were to be eradicated. To this end, he began a campaign to unite all lands under the Garlean banner. Or so we were taught. Yet the Emperor only reached the burn, the Baron said to have been laid waste by icons, after conquering all the lands that lay between. What is more, I am quite certain the practice of summoning was not nearly so widespread in the days before the Empire's founding. When you put it like that, it all starts to sound like an excuse, doesn't it? But to distract from what? Why are you really waging this war? Finally, you ask the right question. I can but hope you heed mine answer and at last accept the righteousness of our cause. My goal is this, to return the world to the way it once was, the way it was always meant to be. In doing so, mankind will be made whole once more. No longer will we suffer from the dissension born of our differences. There will be but one race, a perfect race, as we were when time began. What in Rolga's name are you talking about? I am talking about the origins of this star, of the source and its 13 reflections. At the instant of the great sundering, t'was not only the world that was shattered, but mankind itself. Thus were we divided into myriad races, each with its own unique imperfections. That is why man looks upon his neighbor and feels fear and hatred, why he wages war, why he kills his brother. You all, in your own way, have proven as much today. The peace you seek is but a fleeting solution to a fundamental problem. One which calls for more drastic measures. To bring about everlasting peace, our worlds must be rejoined. That is the goal the Empire would see realized. The glorious future unto which we shall one day shepherd mankind. A rejoining of worlds. I have heard this tale of the Source and its reflections before. Are these not the self-same desires as the Asians? Emperor Varys, do not trust in their words. They will lead you to your doom. My father thought to use them, but in the end he succumbed to their temptations. He embraced summoning like so many other pawns before him. Do not tell us you mean to do the same.
To be a pawn, free from the burden of choice, would be a blessing. But I forswore that privilege the day I learned that the Galian Empire was built by the hand of an Asian. What? Yes. My grandsire, the former emperor, is of their number. And who better to build an empire capable of bringing about the calamitous change we desire? Would you condemn me for this alliance, for bowing to the will of these shadowy masters, when the prize is true and lasting peace? I come not to conquer, but to liberate, to free man from the prison of divergence. Imagine a world united, one perfect race beneath a single standard. An army before whose might these servants of darkness and light would fly as leaves in a storm, never again to meddle in man's affairs. We would be the masters of our own fate. I bid you join me, not as subjects of Garamald, but of a new nation. And together we shall win freedom for ourselves and generations yet unborn. You want to trigger another half dozen calamities? You can't be serious! Have you forgotten how many died? There will be no one left! Do you truly imagine we would aid you in your bloodletting? It is unthinkable! Unconscionable! What is the alternative? To be as cattle waiting for slaughter? I would have us work together that we might take fate into our own hands! Into your hands, perhaps? But what of the other worlds, your Radiance? With every calamity, you obliterate a star and every soul that dwells on it. We are all but tiny, momentary specks within an indifferent universe. We cannot hope to oppose them until we have been made whole once more. Are these truly the words of Garlemald's ruler? The flaws and foibles which you so abhor are what make us who we are. Every nation, even yours, Emperor Varys, is made whole through the combination of these imperfections, the strengths of one compensating for the weaknesses of another. While it is true that man succumbs all too often to anger and avarice, he may yet overcome his baser instincts through the forming of bonds with others, fostering community and cooperation. That the protector of an empire should not only reject these fundamental truths, but seek to change them at so dear a cost to life is indefensible. Such a man is not fit to govern. And you? Warrior of Light, would you refuse me as well?
It would seem the Alliance is of one mind on this matter. You Eorzeans never cease to disappoint me. Though I suppose I have only myself to blame for expecting more from savages. This discussion is at an end. I bid you make ready for our next meeting. It will not be at the negotiating table. I'm not sure what I was expecting from our meeting with the Emperor, but it wasn't that. Still, at least we know now what he's really after. Aye, a future built on a mountain of bodies. I too want the Asians dead, but not at any cost. The last of the reinforcements from Dorma arrived not long ago. I pray it will be enough. Given the Emperor's stated goal, this is a battle we can ill afford to lose. If the Galleons come in force, we may not have much say in the matter, even with our combined strength. We knew from the first that the odds would be against us. But if there is even the slightest chance of victory, we must do everything in our power to seize it. We must seize it, full stop. Here, here. Two of you are to join an irregular unit and support the main host. I won't bother asking if you're minded to fight. After coming this far, how could I not? And for once, there's no one around to count them on me. Not that they would. Not even my brother. But we all know who'll really make the difference. Ready to frighten some Garleans? Wouldn't want to be on their side. Might I ask you to accompany the Dorman contingent? They are strangers here, and your presence would do much to raise their spirits. We would be honored. When our people stride out with you in their midst, I dare say the Eorzeans will feel an ilm taller themselves. High spirits have a way of spreading. Ah, uh, what I wouldn't give to join you. But my duties as field commander will not allow it. I'll leave the front lines in your capable hands. Comrades, ready your arms. The hour of battle has come. May the crystal guide us to victory!
Since the others couldn't be here, we'll have to fight twice as hard. If Alphano wakes to find the Imperials have won, I shall never hear the end of it. It's strange. I thought I would be terrified when the fighting started. I should be terrified. But with you at our side, I can't help feeling everything is going to be all right. So please, don't you dare leave me alone. No matter what happens, we have to survive together.